Nel nome del Padre, Figliolo, Spirito Santo. Amen. Such a separation. Thank you again uh, for being here. Always really uh, appreciate seeing everybody. Here. Have you been sad? The title of my talk today, Free to Save the World. And that was in the reading that Reverend Dusa Althea read so well. It was the last thing that she said. Free to save the world. So I have spoke about freedom uh, on and off lately. It's a very common, A Course in Miracles idea. The word freedom itself uh, is in the Course 216 times, which is a lot. The word free is in the Course 382 times. And then there are a few other words related to free, like freely and freer and freeze. And if you total up freedom and all the times free or some derivation of free, appears in A Course in Miracles at 650 times. That's a lot. Uh, I don't know of any other concept that is in the Course that much. So it's obviously a very, very important thing. Uh, let's talk about freedom just a minute. So if you look up the dictionary definition of freedom, it says the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Okay, that sounds pretty good. I don't think there's much argument about that. I know that we use the term and think about freedom very, very differently. So let's get down to the worldly mundane level at first. Uh, you know, people think about freedom like freedom from work. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to work? A lot of people don't have to work anymore. Uh, people who do work like to take vacations. On vacations, they're free from the responsibilities of work. People who get on in years retire so that they can have the freedom to not work and to enjoy years uh, less structured and maybe travel and do other things. So there is that kind of freedom. There's the freedom from family obligations. You know, a lot of us... Uh, Think about that, or family responsibilities. Sometimes people leave relationships so they can be free to explore new ways of living or new options. Some people view divorce as freedom, uh, and it maybe it is. Usually there's a bit of depression that happens, but hopefully one moves through that and goes to freedom. Uh, right now our society is actually having, I think, a very wonderful discussion about freedom, freedom of speech. Can we say things? Uh, what about all the things that get censored out of uh, YouTube and social media? What about the search results in Google that don't come up because Google doesn't really give you real search results. It has an agenda. You know, what about freedom to travel that might be restricted because of certain things like your vaccination status? What about your freedom to work and your freedom to eat inside restaurants or your freedom to go to the movies or concerts or museums based on things like that? So I'm um, not really going to talk about those things today, but I, I do want to mention that I do think it's great that we are having this discussion in our culture and in the society. We should be open to that. People should have the freedom to discuss those things. And you should be able to listen to people who have other points of view. Of course, in Miracles challenges us, though, in many ways about freedom. And in that idea that we are free to save the world, that's a challenge because that's a freedom that's about accepting a responsibility. We usually think about freedom as letting go of responsibilities, but that free to save the world is we're free to accept that responsibility of saving the world. 
And in that reading that Reverend Dussel Thea read, it said, Spirit am I a holy son of God. She said child. That's fine. It's spirit and I, a holy child of God, free of all limits, safe and healed and whole, free to forgive and free to save the world. We are free to accept that task and to do that task. There is nothing holding us back from actually doing that task. That's why we came here. We came here to heal the world. We came here to save the world. Uh, healing the world, saving the world, I think they mean pretty much the same thing. Well, saving it from what? Well, I'd start with sickness, war, and death. Those are probably pretty good places to start. Let's start with the big three, sickness, war, and death. I'd like to save the world from sickness, war, and death. I'd also like to save it from poverty and imprisonment and many other things as well. But, you know, sickness, war, and death are good places to start. You know, ultimately, those things are illusions, of Course in Miracles tells us. They have no substance. So how could it really be difficult to heal those? They must be easy to heal. You know, but it's the ego thinking that makes them difficult. Actually, the ego thinking tries to make them impossible. You know, people don't really think that it is possible to not die. Uh, I heard a miracles teacher uh, the uh, last week uh, in a workshop, and he was stressing something. And I, I know this teacher, I know him very well, and I've heard him uh, speak many times, and I heard him stress this before. And what he said, and he said this many times during the workshop, he said, everybody dies. And I think he was saying every single body dies. I don't think it was everybody dies. I think it was every body dies. And I just sat with that and I thought, really? I mean, do they really? Or is that just the way it appears to you? I mean, that's what your senses report to you, but is that really what's happening? I mean, if I, if I had to be honest about it, my experience about bodies is that the incredible vast majority of them that I encounter are not dying. I mean, they're living. I walk around and I see a lot of bodies alive. My, my, my experience of bodies is mostly they're living. Um, I have been, you know, close to some people that have passed. My partner, Reverend Larry, passed. And I've, you know, been close to other people that passed. Certainly my mother passed. Uh, Reverend David, who was very active at Community Miracle Center, he passed. I was close to him. So occasionally in my purview, there is a body who is going through this thing that appears to be called death. But just honestly, in a absolute factual manner, the vast majority of bodies I see are not dying. They are living. So I would be uh, hesitant to say everybody dies. Now, the other thing is, why do we think everybody dies? Well, we think everybody dies because that's what we think we see. I mean, these are the witnesses that our senses bring to us. But what does A Course in Miracles actually say about that? It says not to trust our senses and not to believe what they tell us. I mean, it tells us this real precisely. It says your judgment rests upon the witness that your senses offer you. Yet witness never falser was than this. So we're not supposed to believe what our senses tell us. We're not supposed to believe what our eyes see. We're not supposed to believe what our ears hear. Those are projections coming from our thinking and their illusions. And I love how this quotation says, they're the most false things that there are. Witness never falser was than this. There is nothing falser than what our eyes are telling us and our ears hear. I mean, that's something to just really take in. Uh, it says the same thing. It's a little longer quote, but it's just so good just to really remember that this is actually what a Course teaches. 
You do not really question what is shown you through the body's eyes. Even though you learned a long while since, your senses do deceive. That you believe them to the last detail which they report is even stranger. When you pause to recollect how frequently they have been faulty witnesses indeed. Why would you trust them so implicitly? You know, that's a question. So people think of it as a rhetorical question, but I got the guidance for that. I should answer all the rhetorical questions that A Course in Miracles asks. I, I challenge some of you with that. And when you're reading the Course and it asks these questions, it asks thousands of questions. Don't just read over them, answer them. So why trust our body's senses? No reason, because they have proved themselves to be wrong so often in my experience, there is no reason to trust them. So yes, perhaps we see bodies dying and perhaps we think we see every body dying. I just challenged that though. But even if we did, does it mean death is real? And it doesn't mean that everybody has to die. That's just what we've seen so far. You know, I love how it calls these faulty witnesses, or it calls them a false witness, because that just brings to mind the te uh, ninth commandment. And the ninth commandment is, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And you know, that was drummed into me when I was a young Catholic boy. So, you know, I remember it. And we were taught that, that that basically meant that you shouldn't lie. You know, you shouldn't say you saw your friend do something that you didn't see him do. Or you shouldn't say that you heard your friend say something that he didn't really say. But of course, in Miracles, is taking this to a whole other level. It's saying that even if you saw your friend do something, or even if you heard your friend say something, you still shouldn't hold that against them. Because most likely, it's a lie. It's a false witness. Your senses are lying to you. Did I see my neighbor do something? Doesn't matter. My eyes are false witnesses. Did I hear my neighbor say something? Doesn't matter. My ears are false witnesses. Uh, the famous uh, comedian, Richard Pryor, uh, has a skit. Uh, I think he, it's in his uh, concert film, Live on the Sunset Strip. And he talks about his wife catching him with another woman. And he just denies it. And then at one point, he asks her, who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes? <laughs> you know, and I think it's a takeoff actually on an old Marx Brothers routine. So who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes? Well, who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe our lying eyes? Are we going to believe our lying ears? Okay, our eyes and our ears tells us that everybody dies. But do we? are we going to believe that? I choose not to believe that. I choose to believe what I feel from a deep sense of truth being instilled inside of me by my divinity, by the Holy Spirit, by God, that death isn't real and that everybody does not need to die. Even though maybe that's what the world sees and maybe that's what can be proved you know, there's also another great Bible quote about seeing. It said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So, you know, we were challenged even in the Bible with the same idea. We are going to need to believe things that we have not seen if we are going to be miracle workers. If we are going to be miracle healers, we've got to come from some deep sense of connection to the truth not from what our lion eyes and lying ears tell us. And if we're going to save the world, it's going to take a fair amount of that. And we are free to save the world. There is nothing holding us back from saving the world. And we are free to act as if death isn't real, if that's what we're connecting to inside of us inside the truth of us. Everybody does not have to die.
We can know the unreality of death. We can have the freedom to choose that. We can have the freedom to act from that. I have the freedom to choose that. I am choosing that. I have the freedom to act from that. And you all have that freedom too. And I believe that is what A Course in Miracles is leading us to and teaching us. Getting back to freedom. Okay, there's, as I said, there's, you know, so many great passages about freedom in A Course in Miracles. There's a wonderful later workbook lesson, workbook lesson number 321, says, Father, my freedom is in you alone. I did not understand what made me free, nor what my freedom is, nor where to look to find it. Father, I searched in vain until I heard your voice directing me now I would guide myself no more. So I thought my freedom was in believing what my eyes told me or what my ears told me. And that's not freedom at all. That's imprisonment. Freedom is the metanoia that happens through transformation from consciousness within. And I believe what the voice for God within me is telling me I'm not going to search for vain in vain for witnesses and reinforcement in the world to tell me what is the truth. So we're free to accept the will of God. And uh, we're free to surrender to the will of God. So, you know, some people might think freedom and surrender are antithetical, and that's kind of a paradox. It's kind of a paradox to be free because of surrender. I mean, there's a, you know, an, an argument, an intellectual discussion in spiritual communities. I mean, how free is free will? I mean, is free will really free when in the end we're all going to decide to do exactly what God wants us to do? <laughs> <laughs> and what has been preordained that we're going to do since time began. So how free is that? So, uh, you know, we have to answer those questions. But we all have free will. And there is a wonderful, beautiful freedom in surrender, in surrendering to that will. You know, and there's, there's that could be a whole talk in and of itself, the, the freedom of surrender. Uh but I surrender into the freedom to accept God's will to save the world. And I surrender into the freedom to believe that I actually can do it. I actually believe that I can and that I am healing the war in the Ukraine between Ukraine and Russia. Because that's just coming from my consciousness. I trust that I am free to heal the COVID-19 pandemic and I take responsibility for every good thing that happens. I take responsibility for the fact that cases are way low right now in the USA and that is just terrific. And I take the responsibility that we can be free in our society to work and to live and to eat in restaurants and to not have to submit to certain forms of things that I would consider medical tyranny. And I see that happening too and all those mitigation strategies lessening. And I think that's a great thing that a certain amount of freedom has come back to our society for whatever reasons. And I believe that I am free to have an effect on all of those things because I am free to save the world. That's my talk for today. Thank you very much. Such a separation. Have you been lonely? 
Have you been sad? How does it feel to lose such a close one? Have you been mad? 